I'd say welcome back, but I haven't been away. I did take my trip to Columbia. Uh, I've been trying to do one once a month, although this month I won't be going. Um, <clears throat> I went for a short period of time. I was only there for about a week, and then I needed to return because of some things here. I'd actually planned on going for about two weeks, but that didn't happen. Uh, my laptop is functioning, so I could edit videos, uh, so I could come back and use my laptop. This video is going to be about some things that I love about Cuenca as compared to Armenia. Uh, but first, I'm going to cover a few topics. First of all, the Patreon clients. Thank you again so much. I did do that video that I promised. It was personal. It was a little uncomfortable planning and preparing for it. But when I actually did it, there was no problem at all. Uh, it was the video that you requested about um, my journey in weight loss and what that was all about. And as I promised, it was not a specific to Cuenca or South America. So uh, those will remain free and open to the public. And uh, further, for the Patreon viewers, uh, the request I got to go into detail about why I chose Ecuador and the process that I used to make that choice. Um, what was that all about? I will be doing that video and I'll probably get that video done in about a week or so. Uh, so watch for it. My plans for March, as I mentioned, I'll be staying in Cuenca. I'll be doing some specific videos here in Cuenca. Uh, keep sending in your requests. Right now I've got uh, lots of topics to do and so I'll be working on those and also particularly this month I'm very busy with the foundation um, there's a lot of steps that have to be gone through uh, for a nonprofit in Ecuador those steps have been done so now my part comes in um, the marketing setting up the website and the logo and business cards and stationery and uh, the things necessary, um, not glamorous, but necessary uh, to run a business or a foundation. This is a, a nonprofit and the general overall purpose and goal is to get street kids off the street and back into school. The first project will be keeping kids that are at risk for becoming street kids in school. There will be a video that will be quite lengthy covering this. So part of it will be essentially a promotion, advertisement, of what it is because foundations live on donations. And so we're gonna be pulling up PBS Begathon and um, you know looking for donations but um, it will be in general just to let everyone know what's going on and what does happen here in Ecuador. Uh, how did I get involved in this? Uh, this was Audrey's dream for many years. I've covered this in other videos. I was requested to be an officer in this foundation. I agreed for a period of time. So I'm the vice president of this foundation, but I won't be vice president in this foundation past this year necessary for things that I need to do to help them but once those are done I have no interest in being on a board of director I, I just don't want to be locked into that now on to the main topic no it wasn't clickbait now is it three or is it four things I don't know I'll figure it out when I actually post this video and do the topic but let's just say four things four things Cuenca is better at than Armenia, Colombia. Now, why am I doing this? I got a comment saying, well, all you do is talk about the positives in Colombia, and if you love Colombia so much, why are you living in Cuenca? And so I'm gonna make a general statement. Here's the truth. It's hard 
to find things in Ecuador that are better than Colombia. Colombia is an amazing place. Having said that, life is more than a cost of living. It's more than a country. Life is more than a climate. Life, friends, it's family, friends like family. Life is work, it's having purpose. When you find those things, you need to think hard before you let them go. Those things cannot be found in the right combination everywhere. Or they can, but it may take an inordinate amount of time to do that. When you find the things that truly matter in life, then letting them go because you can get a different cost of living or letting them go because the temperature is a few degrees better than uh, where you are, those things to me seem a bit frivolous compared to the things that in life are important to me. And that applies no matter if you're right now, if you're in the USA, if you're in Canada, if you're in Britain, if you're in Ecuador, before you go make a change, you need to consider those things. It seems like most of the questions I get refer to things that, while they're important, they're not the critical things to a life, in my opinion. Now maybe cost and living is a do-all and end-all for some people, but I suspect that once you find what works for you, everything else then becomes a priority. And if you don't find what you need to have a happy life, that cost of living maybe wasn't the best way to choose. So give that some thought. I'm done preaching. My first thing that is better, of course these are all in my opinion. In my opinion, my first thing that is better in Cuenca than it is in Armenia, Colombia. That would be the clean streets, the clean buildings as compared one to the other. Now, why is that? Well, in Cuenca, you have a virtual army of street cleaners. They have nothing to do but all day long going around looking for gum wrappers, cleaning up messes, uh, dogs tore into a garbage bag, uh, who's going to clean that up? People here don't do that so much because they have this army of street cleaners. Consequently, wherever you go, it's generally pretty clean, if not spotless. In Armenia, you don't have that army of street cleaners. Store owners clean in front of their own stores. How homeowners clean in front of their own homes. And if somebody comes along and throws a bag of trash out the window of a car, people might resent that and feel it's not my job to pick up somebody's trash. And so I'm not saying in Armenia uh, that the streets are littered with trash, but what I'm saying is, in general, they are dirtier than they are in Cuenca. Now, as an aside, in Cali, oh my God, the whole place, you drive through Cali and it looks like a garbage dump. But I hate Cali anyway. So. Now, the buildings. I mentioned the buildings. Why would the buildings be any different? Well, here's why. Number one, Armenia is a culture of individual transportation. I swear everybody's got a motorcycle or everybody's got a car. Now, of course, everybody doesn't, but it's for, for a city, a small city, but a city with lots of buses and taxis, you got a crazy amount of people that own their own vehicles. You can buy a good, decent motorcycle for $1,000. You can license and register it for peanuts. There's not a lot of paperwork. I saw a girl, a friend I was with, I asked him about it. He walked over and he talked to her. She was a high school student. I suspected because of the way she dressed, she's got a backpack on. She's sitting on a nice motor scooter, either new or relatively new. Nice motor scooter, Yamaha, by the way, in fact. And I'm wondering, how, do, how does this girl have, have this motorcycle or, or this scooter? And so he went over and he asked her, she bought it. She bought it with a part-time job that she has after school. And she bought it, it was under $1,000. And she saved for it for a while. Um, 
you, you don't really, that's not a story that you're going to find in Cuenca. And so what does that do? It puts an awful lot of motorcycles and cars on the road. Now, I will say that the air quality in Armenia is actually very good, and they don't have buses that spew black smoke anymore. But the reason those buildings are dirty is because for a long time, the air was really polluted in Armenia and other cities, in, in Pereira where I lived. Uh, I would go out and my lungs would burn, my eyes would water. It was one of the things I really hated about the place. It was so bad. I mean, it, it, you might as well have been in Mexico City. It was so bad that they had to do something. But they were kind of late to the table in creating laws for pollution, uh, uh, for um, environmental inspections on vehicles. So for the last handful of years, they've been doing that and the air quality shows it. Air quality is very good. But for those years before they did that, these buildings accumulated this grime, this black soot that kind of stands out. So when you come to Cuenca, you don't see that so much. You'll see it in a few areas where uh, there's an inordinate amount of buses spewing black smoke and you'll see it somewhat. But in Armenia, it's pretty common. If you look in the videos that I do just going through the town, you look around and there is this overall sooty look that is, the uh, best I can tell, ingrained into the buildings. And so I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. It's unfortunate because um, it's a beautiful little city. So that's definitely a plus that uh, Cuenca has over Armenia. Number two, Tranvia. Okay, had to throw that in, little joke. Number two, house and apartment sizes. Now, in Armenia, and you could say in general Colombia, but in Armenia, when you go look at houses, you go look at apartments, all the rooms are particularly small. That's historical, it's cultural, it's tradition. As long as I remember, it's, it's been like that, and I'm sure that goes back hundreds of years. So you can go get a brand new three bedroom, two bathroom apartment, but it's going to be considerably smaller than if you come to Cuenca and you get yourself a three bedroom, two bathroom apartment. In every case, no, not necessarily, but in general, it's, it's certainly the case. Now, I've been apartment, in, apartment hunting recently in Armenia, and I've looked at a number of places, and like every single one of them were smaller than places that I've looked at here in Cuenca. Um, so I see that as a definite plus, and I mentioned it's cultural, but why in Cuenca? Why wouldn't it be that way in Cuenca? Well, in Cuenca, you have a situation where you have a massive amount of people that have left or are currently in the United States or Canada, and they're in that culture. They see those things they like, and when they return or when they instruct relatives to begin building uh, a house here in Ecuador for themselves, they tend to do it to U.S. standards. So if you think all these apartments are, you know, strictly, you know, for gringos, they would go broke building all of these for gringos. There's not enough gringos around. But there's tens of thousands of Ecuadorians that have or will be returning from the United States who want those gringo type houses and apartments. That's why they're here. And they've grown to appreciate and like that spaciousness. So here you find those larger sizes available. Where in Colombia, ironic, is that the right word? It, you'll see many more thousands, tens of thousands of expats in Colombia, not in Armenia, but in Colombia. So why isn't it like that? Well, see, the expats actually don't drive these trends you don't have that massive amount of Colombians that went to the USA and returned. It's, that's not a phenomenon that's really hit Colombia that much. It's a huge thing for Ecuador. So that's 
basically why it's like that. And I find it nice because I like space. You know, when I was living in Hiron, I'm living in this huge house that was five bedrooms, five bathrooms, had an office, a gigantic kitchen, huge dining room, big living room, one person. And my Ecuadorian friend Maria is asking me, why on earth would you live it? Well, why not? The doors close. I like that space. It doesn't mean I, you know, have to use it. I'm comfortable having that space. And in Armenia, it will be hard pressed for you to find at whatever price that sort of thing. Number three, closeness to different climates. Now, I'm not sure how to phrase this. It's not just climates, but geography as well. Within a few hours drive, I can get to the beach. Within a few hours drive, I can get to the Amazon jungle. If you're on the beach, you're in a few hours drive to the Andes mountains. In Colombia, you have all of these things. You have the beach life and you have the Amazon, but in some cases, it's a matter of days to get there. It's not as easy, convenient, and close as it is in Ecuador. And that can be kind of nice. I'm not a beach person anymore. I mean, I, I went through that phase and the truth is, well, I can love it on vacation for two, three, four weeks. After that, for me, it kind of just gets hot and mosquitoey. However, it is glorious on those vacations. An advantage here in Cuenca is I could hop on a bus for a $10 bill and end up on the beach in a matter of hours and equally easy to come back where that's not necessarily the case in from Armenia. Now you can get there and it's it's not that difficult, but it's it doesn't have the ease that it has in Cuenca. Here you can do it on a whim. It doesn't even require planning. Uh, and so I think that's a definite plus for Cuenca. And I guess the number is going to be four. Here's the fourth thing that I think is done better in Cuenca. That's patience. It's a slower pace. When you go to Armenia, frantic wouldn't be the right word, but it is fast paced. It's full of life. Tons of people out walking around for fun or for a purpose. Entrepreneurship is not only alive there, but it's seriously strong which means showing up on time is important there, which means moving faster, which means not stopping to smell the roses so much as it is here in Cuenca. Here, this is the manana culture. This is, um, I'm gonna be there at 12, but if I show up at one, it's okay. Not personally, it drives me crazy, but I've learned to appreciate being able to relax and slow down. What you find is essentially a level of stress that's almost non-existent. And even if you get a little stressed, it's easy to step back and repair from because everybody around you is operating at this slower pace. So there may be some downsides to it, but I personally love that about Cuenca. Now it's not terrible in Armenia and I don't want to paint the wrong picture, but the first thing I think of when I think of our Armenia is industrious. Um, it's it's really an active place and brings all that with it. Not to the extent that I had in my working life in uh, the United States, where I'd get up in the morning, I'd work all day, I'd work through lunch, I'd get home, I might be working at home. I mean, my life was work. Now, I enjoyed aspects of that, but there is something to be said for being able to kick back and relax and let things go. And Cuenca has that by buckets. So, while I may sing the praises of Colombia, to those who wonder why I'm living in Cuenca if I love Colombia so much, well, I'll go back to that statement that I initially made. There are things here that I have built, that I have established, 
that are not something I should frivolously throw away. There's also aspects about living in Cuenca that are thoroughly enjoyable and unique to Cuenca. So then it comes down to a question of, can I build that life somewhere else that fulfills me? And is the environment that I'm going to live in suited to the way I want to live? And so making that kind of decision um, is something that really I personally need to think long and hard on. Will I end up living in, in Colombia? I probably will. I mean, I lived there before and there were reasons I didn't go back there. I, I'm thoroughly happy with living here. Um, and if I move to Colombia, it won't be a slam on Cuenca. But I can also say that I could be very happy living here for the rest of my life. So, as you consider making a move, please consider things beyond just cost of living or beyond that temperature. Please consider what makes your life happy. See you next time. You know you're cool.